guys, it's Sam, and today we have my July book haul. So first up, shout out to everybody who joined me on Instagram Live today. Your girl needed some venting time and I appreciate you highly. So if you don't follow me on Instagram and you want to join me for more Instagram Lives, definitely check out my Instagram, it's listed down below. I will be doing those more regularly now that my schedule soon, soon, will be opening up a bit more because I like talking with you guys. I was just gonna do like a little like plain makeup and then I got talking to you guys and here's my face, so. There are a lot of books to go through this month. Some of these are overlap from last month because right after I did last month's book haul, I got like a few books in the mail. So these are more like end of June and then July book haul. But yeah, I have some books, I have some boxes. Let's get into it. So first we have a book that I pre-ordered I'm currently reading and that is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. This is a Rumpelstiltskin-y type retelling and I will talk about this more soon. This is also one of the BookNet Fest official book club books. So if you guys haven't heard, we are having a book club for BookNet Fest that you can participate in whether you're attending the event or not. But if you are going to the event, there's going to be a book club panel talking about the different books. So this is one of our picks and we'll be talking about that at BookNet Fest, but also feel free to just read along with us even if you are not attending the event. I will leave the link for the BookNet Fest Twitter down below where all the information will be if you want to read along with us. Then we have a more recent arrival and that is In an Absent Dream by Sean and McGuire. This is the next book in the Wayward Children series. I've briefly skimmed the synopsis, but like it honestly doesn't matter to me because I will read every book in this series. It's about children that go into portal fantasy worlds and then come back out of them and are trying to find their worlds again and all this wonderful stuff. I've done reviews for all the books in this series that you can check out if you're interested in my thoughts about them. But this one, I remember mentioning the Goblin Market and I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very excited about all the things, so I can't wait. And like, this cover man. I mean, I want to walk into this. I have a lot of feelings about forests, and this speaks to me on like a really deep emotional level. Then we have Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is one I talked about in my most anticipated upcoming releases for the summer. This is a urban fantasy that is taking place and inspired by Native American folklore and mythology. Our main character is Native American. She's a monster hunter. All this cool kick-ass stuff and I've been hearing nothing but good things about this and I cannot wait to read it. It's also fairly short which means I'm hoping to get to it like actually this summer. I don't want to set standards too high for myself but I'm hoping. Then Roshni Chakshi who I love and adore reached out and asked if I wanted a copy of her upcoming book and I was like girl Yes? Do you even know me? She actually told me about the synopsis of this book when I interviewed her a couple of years ago and we were just chit-chatting about like Hades and Persephone and all the things that we love. And I've been waiting for it to be released for so long and now that it's actually a thing that's in my hands, I'm so excited. And that is The Gilded Wolves. This comes out in January, thank God, because I actually have time to read it. Like, if this came out soon, I wouldn't have time to read it before it came out and I'd be very upset. But it's, it's here and it's coming in January. And this takes place in 1889 in Paris and it's kind of like the dark seedy underbelly of Paris and there's magical artifact and there's screw people that are trying to pull off this heist to steal this magical artifact and it sounds so lush and beautiful and Roshni's writing is so gorgeous and stunning and atmospheric that I cannot wait. Like I'm honestly picturing like I know it's not at all the same you know but like Moulin Rouge basically. You know like the darkness, the colors, the beauty, the like darkness and I am ready. I have been ready. I was born ready. For some reason I was looking at that cover and I don't think that this is right because I don't know anything about art but for some reason that Codsworth line that's like if it's not Baroque don't fix it. I like got in my head. Someone that's an art major is gonna yell at me and be like that is nothing to- I'm sorry it's just for some reason for some reason. Then some unexpected books showed up at my door. These are all books that I either requested or they reached out to me and asked if I wanted them, etc, etc. Some books showed up that I had not asked for, which is typically unsolicited, that's what I refer to it as, and a lot of books, not a lot, but like, I don't show books that I get unless I'm actually interested in them. It just feels sort of like false advertising, even though it's not advertising. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to show something that I get just because I got it. I'm going to show it because I feel like it actually fits in my channel and with the people who watch my channel and with my reading taste, because otherwise, like, why? But these all do, and I was very pleasantly surprised to get them. The first one being The Monster Baru Comorant, which is by Seth Dickinson. So... 
This is the sequel to the Trader Brew Cormorant, and I've been hearing amazing things about that book. Like, everyone's been telling me to read that. I've been hearing amazing things. It's been all over everywhere. It's been in a lot of, like, fantasy communities. I don't know a ton about it. I haven't even read the synopsis for it. I just know I wanted to read it. People say it's kind of like... It doesn't even matter what people say. I just have known I've wanted to read it. And then this sequel showed up, basically telling me, like, girl, freaking read this. And I'm like, fine. So now I have to get the first book and read that. Maybe by the end of the year, maybe not. We'll see what happens. But I've been, people have been asking me to read this for a while, or start this series, rather. And so this showing up is kind of like a sign that it's time. Then I got The Faded Sky by Mary Bunnett Kowal. You guys will remember that I got the first book in this series, which is already out, which is The the Calculating Stars, I think, which is this alternate history lady astronaut, like, space mission thing that ha everyone's been talking about in, like, the sci-fi community. This is the second book in that, I think it's just a duology, and I've been wanting to read that one, you know, haven't had time, whatever. But this is the second part to it, and what's fun about this one is she signed it, which I, like, wasn't expecting whatsoever, but her, her ink ran out. <laughs> halfway through. So it's like, very, and then it changes. She's like, ink change, special. Isn't that funny? Then we have this absolute brick, which yes, initially scared me. And I was like, I'm not even going to attempt to read this or show this or anything because I, I can't. But I think I'm actually going to really enjoy this book. So this is European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlewoman by Theodora Goss. Now this is the follow up to the first book, which is A Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter, which I've seen around, and I've seen this kind of cover and stuff around, but I never really looked into it. Apparently, apparently, it's like the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen with ladies, and that is so on brand, okay? I don't know, you guys don't understand. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, the movie, I love it for the trash that it is. It speaks to my soul on a lot of levels. I just really enjoy it. Like, all these literary figures meeting up and and doing stuff but they're mostly they're all dudes besides like dracula's bride or something i think is the other one or no it's like van helsing something the vampire woman but this this is the answer to that and yes it's huge and i should probably read the first book first but oh my god like the women that are involved are like mary so mary jekyll is like the main character and she helped sherlock holmes and dr watson and then there's like Catherine Moreau, Justine Frankenstein, Mary's sister Diana Hyde, Beatrice Rapazzini. Like, I, okay, this just, they're gonna meet up with Lucinda Van Helsing. It's like historical Ocean's Eight, okay? And that that's, yeah, yeah, that's something I need. So, looks like I'm reading the first book, which is probably just as large. Shit. And then this little book showed up which is Heretics Anonymous by Katie Henry. This was actually one of the books that we were considering for the BookNet Fest book club, actually end up going with another book, but this is one that we were thinking about, so I've already had seen it around and heard about it and been looking into it, so I was unexpectedly excited to get this in the mail because it's a contemporary, which you guys know I don't usually read, but it's about Michael, who's an atheist, but he's being sent to a strict Catholic, I think like boarding school or just religious school, and he ends up meeting up with a group of kids who also don't all fit in, and they start a little club called Heretics Anonymous, and it sounds like it's a diverse group of kids hanging out, kind of like a off, like, offshoot of Breakfast Club almost type thing, and it sounds kind of delightful. I haven't heard any reviews or anything for it yet, but it's something that I was interested in. Like I said, we almost picked for BookNet Fest, so I am interested to kind of see if it lives up to its possible good potential. So that is it for the books. Now I have two boxes, actually. The first is this Candles in Bookland themed box. Now this I actually got in June, but I got it right after I filmed my book haul because my mail gets kind of messed up sometimes and I don't get things in time. So I'm not sure if this is still available, but this is a themed candle box. And I already showed some of it on Instagram stories, actually, when I first got it because I wanted to show it soon after I got it. So if you guys ever want little sneak peeks, sometimes I will show things on Instagram stories. Again, another plug for Instagram, not intentional. I just wanted to let you guys know that I've already kind of shown some of this. So this is how it was all wrapped up. And this themed box is for the witches from Throne of Glass. And though I don't love Throne of Glass, and I've actually given up myself on the series, those witches I would die for. So not only does it come with candles, but it also comes with art. So we have Manon, who's looking beautiful and wonderful. We have her and her, her dragon, her Wervin. And then I don't know these characters' names. You guys probably do. I think one's a lead or whatever. 
um, and then one's another one, I forget, but they look gorgeous, and that even that just makes me be like, should I pick up those books again? And then this is the little card that it came with, with a quote again from Throne of Glass about the witches and everything. So this is a Man in Black Beak and a 13 box, and let me tell you, I already smelled these things because I, I couldn't not, and I wanted to, like I said, open them on Instagram, but... They're amazing. Before I get into the candles, there's also some bookmarks, and these are actually all, for the most part, so the one's Vicious from V.E. Schwab, one is Kaz from Six of Crows, another one is a Six of Crows one, and this one, I'm not sure which one this is. Something about a, a mermaid. Oh, there's more. And, and then there's all the, the bookmarks that also are like the art that I already showed in smaller form. So again, they're beautiful. These these bookmarks, freaking gorgeous, man. So first we have this dark and mysterious padded book sleeve. So this is to protect your book if you bring it in a bag or something so it doesn't get all ruined. And it's just, I mean, look at how supple. And then we have the scents. Like I said, I've already smelled these. So I'm actually gonna do, save the very, my very favorite one for last. But first we have the man and candle. And it has a little, like, wooden charm thing on it with a label on it. A lot of them, this box, have the glitter on them. This is more, like, citrusy, fruity, sweet. It also does come with a guide to the scents. So, Manon's is sweet cider, cloves, blood orange, citrus, warm spices, and sandalwood. I'm definitely getting the citrus and the spice notes the most with this one. I love her candle scent. She sent me scents before, and I completely love and adore them, so... I knew I was gonna love these, but like some of these are just out of this world. So the second one is Astrin. So that is her name, Astrin. And that is also glittery on top. This one is more like berry y. Yeah, leather, woody, raspberry, and vanilla. So I'm definitely getting the raspberry and like the woodsiness as like a undercurrent, as like a second note. But it really leads with that like raspberry type scent. A lot, little bit muskier than the Manon one. Then we have this smaller one that is for Sorrel. This one is definitely musky and I love these kind of musky scents. This is Amber, Warm Spices, and Sandalwood, which is so up my alley. I love those kinds of like really deep woodsy scents. Like, ooh man, as soon as it gets even slightly cold out, I'm burning that all the time. Then we have Abraxas, and this really surprised me because this is more of a like upbeat scent for a little, for a little dragon, but uh, this is a very clean smell. So this one doesn't have any glitter on it, but this one is Wildflower Spice, Clean Air, Fresh Herbal Scent, and a Hint of Leather. So definitely has more of that like beachy meadowy scent that you get in some candles. Like if you're a candle connoisseur, and I've been smelling candles since I was like five because my mom would always go and buy like specialty candles places, so I know all the candle scents. So this almost has that like oceany smell to it that you get for some candles. So much more of like a spring, summer, fresh, meadowy type scent because he's a pure bean. And then my favorite and the one I absolutely lost my shit over when I smelled it for the first time is the one that's Elides. Okay. Oh my gosh. So this is glittery again. I just, I lost my capacity for words because this smells so good. I don't know if I want to smell like that or always smell it or what it is about this smell, but I said when I smelled this on Instagram stories that this is how I imagine that Natalie Dormer smells. And like, have I thought about that in detail before? Yeah. It's, it's so it's intoxicating. So this is Amber, Musk, Cherry, Floral, Jasmine, Berry, and Sandalwood. And somehow that combination is like my my own personal brand of heroin. <laughs> I am hilarious. So this, this, like, I don't know how all those scents combine to make this, but it is the most beautiful, beautiful smell. Am the amber and the musk, I think, is what really gets me, and I love sandalwood, and like, all those smells are things that I really love, and it's just this feminine, but grounded smell, because it's not overly like, floral or, like, sweet, but just enough sweetness and just enough muskiness, like that perfect blend. I want to bathe in this, to be honest. So that is it for the June themed box for Candles in Bookland. If you're interested, I will leave information for them down below so that you can get any other themed boxes for the future. 
I have yet to smell a bad scent from them that they have sent my way. And last but not least, we have this month's Owl Crate box. As you guys know, I am an Owl Crate affiliate, so I will leave my coupon code down below for you guys to check out to get some money off of your box. That coupon code does not reimburse me financially in any way, that is just for you guys. Another month, another month's theme forgotten. Haha. <laughs> Strange and unusual. I forgot, obviously, because I always forget. But, man, look at that spoop. It is still summer, Owl Crate. It is not quite time for spoop, but apparently they're bringing the spoop early. Let's do this. Let's do this. I don't even know what to expect, honestly. I have no idea. And it's basically known at this point that everything in here is an Owl Crate exclusive of some kind. So the first thing is this Stay Peculiar Pendant, and it has Owl Crate on the back. So this is obviously from the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series, which I have not read, but definitely works with this theme. I like the little clock thing. Oh man, the colors, man. That's, or the lack of. Works for me. Oh, there's a little Stranger Things Funko Pop. I knew there'd be something Stranger Things related. A little Stranger Things Funko Pop of Dustin, who is the sweetest, most pure bean. Oh my gosh. I can't wait for the next season. Ooh, spoopy. So, little Ouija mints. Mystifying mints. Man, this is so spoopy. Should I try some? try one. It's probably gonna be like an owl toy, but this is something to definitely keep. Oh, man, I'm gonna have to... Oh, that's funny. So the mints are like actually like Ouija board, like the little thing shaped. I don't even know what that thing's called because I don't mess with that shit, man. Like, I'm okay with the aesthetic of it, but I'm not... I'm not fucks with that. Oh yeah, very owl toy -y. You know, owl toys have that like almost medicinal scent to them. Yeah, that's got... But they're effective. Whew. Then there's this wallet from Reverie and Ink, and this says the head is too wise, the heart is all fire. Pretty big. That's a big wallet. I'm trying to downsize my wallets actually, but this is pretty. Oh, and it has a little like you can attach this so you can carry it as a as like a wristlet, which is preferable because I don't like carrying a purse all the time, man. Just annoys me. And we have this month's pins. So if you collect the pins, it always comes with a pin that is themed. How many times can I say pin? Ooh, then there's these little, let me see, I'll create skull push pins. So I don't know if you guys can see, but it's like those little like rubbery push pins with skulls on them. What kind of spoopy book is coming out? I don't even know. This is a little Luna Love Good sticker and it says you're just as sane as I am. And I pretty that is. I really like this theme of art. I've seen this in a few boxes and it's adorable. Then we have this print and it's a whale. There's like stuff on it. This is probably a reference to something that I'm not realizing. It just says that strange doesn't always have to mean spooky and it's not. This is beautiful and lovely. It's like it's space, the ocean, and like books and tea. And those are all things I highly enjoy. This is a book I'm actually really excited about and didn't realize it had a spooky vibe to it because apparently I didn't really read the synopsis when I edited it to my most anticipated list. But uh, here we are. And it's My Plain Jane from Cynthia Han, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. Now this is sort of like retellings or takes on classics. So they wrote another one, and I'm forgetting what it's called. It's in the same kind of series, but they're companions, so you don't have to read all of them, which is my understanding. But this one is supposed to be like Jane Eyre focused. So it makes sense, because it's saying like she sees dead people looking for love in all the wrong places. Jane Eyre, that is. So it's a Jane Eyre kind of retelling spinoff thing. Yeah. I, I just didn't make the connection and I'm so excited because I wasn't expecting to get this book anytime soon, but now I haven't. I think you should just go and read the synopsis because the synopsis has little like quips in it that are really funny, but it's a Jane Eyre retelling and it's more of like a ghost story, so it's not just, it's more gothic than even the original, if that's, if that's possible. And this comes with a letter from the authors, which they always have, something like that, and then this is a diorama of Thornfield Hall, which is where it takes place. So it's like a little like paper thing that you can make your own Thornfield Hall, which is super creative and cute. And then they have this month's little newsletter, which as you guys know, has the comparisons of the two covers. This is the cover I've always seen, so I didn't know there was any spoop because I didn't read it apparently. And then like different things like um, interviews with the authors and interviews with vendors and stuff like that. And then next month's theme for August is Ruthless Royals. 
And in the August box, everyone will receive an exclusive item from Crafted Van, which is a little magnetic bookmark people that have been very popular for some time. So if you are interested in next month's box, Ruthless Royals is what it's going to be. All right, so that is it for my July book haul. So comment below, let me know if you've read any of these books and what you've thought of them, and if there's any of these books that you're excited about being released soon. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye. <laughs>